Hi, this is Philip Pador, founder of NCLEX RN45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about TB. It's estimated that about 2 billion people worldwide are infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis, often just shortened tuberculosis or simply TB. 2 billion is a lot of people, right? But even though they're infected, it doesn't mean that all of these people have symptoms. The vast majority of about 90 to 95 percent aren't even aware that they are infected of TB. And this is because usually the immune systems can contain it, such that it isn't able to multiply and often it remains latent or dormant, as opposed to active which usually causes symptoms and means it can spread to others, if the whole system becomes debilitated at some point down the road, like with age or some other illness persons grow older, it can be allowed to reactivate or basically wake up and become very serious, especially if it spreads through the body. Mycobacteria are interesting bunch. They're slender rod shaped and need oxygen to survive. In other words, there are strict aerobes. They've got an unusually waxy cell wall, which is mainly a result of the productions of mycolic acid. Because of this waxy cell wall, they're acid fast, meaning that it can hold up to die in spite of being exposed to the alcohol. Living in a bright red color when his Zeal Nielsen stains is used. The wall also makes them incredibly hard and allows them to resist weak disinfectants and survive on the dry surfaces for months at a time. No mycobacterium tuberculosis is usually transmitted via inhalations, which is how they gain entry into the lungs. Now, we breathe in all sorts of viruses and bacteria all the time, but we've got defenses to take care, most of them. For one air that we breathe in is turbulent in the upper airways and drives most bacteria against mucus which is then cleared pretty quickly. Ultimately though, TB can avoid the mucus traps and makes its way to the deep airway in alveoli, where we can have the macrophages which eats up foreign cells and digest and destroy them. With TB, they recognize foreign proteins on their cell surface and phagocytize them. With most cases, the macrophages then fuses the phagosome with the lysosome, which has hydraulic and pretty much break down any biomedical molecule. TB is strictly through, and once inside the macrophage, they produce a protein that inhibits this fusion, which allows the mycobacterium to survive. It doesn't just survive though, it proliferates and creates a localized infection. At this point, the person has developed primary tuberculosis, which means that they have a signs of infections soon after being exposed to TB. Even though it sounds bad, most people at this stage are actually asymptomatic or maybe have mid-flu-like illness. About three weeks after initial infections, cell-mediated immunity kicks in, and immune cells surround the sites of TB infections creating granuloma, essentially an attempt to wall off the bacteria and prevent it from spreading. The process referred to as the caseous necrosis, which means cheese-like necrosis. Since the dead tissue is soft and white and looks a bit like cheesy, this area is known as gun focus, either carried over by immune cells through the limbs or by direct extensions of the gun focus infection, and causes cessations there as well. And together, these creating tissues and associated lymph nodes make up a characteristic like gun complex. Gun complex are usually subplural and occur in the lower lobes of the lungs. That issues that encapsulated by the granuloma undergoes fibrosis and often a calcification, producing scar tissues that can be seen on x-ray. The calcified can complex called the rank complex. In some cases, although a scar is a leftover, the mycobacteria is killed off by the immune system and that's the end of that. In other cases, even though they are walled off, they remain viable and therefore still alive, but they are dormant. Even when a person's immune system becomes compromised, like with age or with aging, 
The GAN focus can become reactivated and the infections can spread through either one or both upper lobes of the lungs. Though that is because oxygenation is greatest in these areas. And TB being an arrow prefers areas of greater oxygenations, right? Since they were previously exposed to the immune systems, memory T cells quickly release cytokinins to try to control the new outbreak, which forms more areas of caseous necrosis, this time though it tends to cavitate or form cavities, which can allow the bacteria to disseminate or spread through the airways in the lymphatic channels to other parts of the lungs, which can cause bronchopneumonia. But it can also spread via the vascular system, and in fact, almost every other tissues in the body called systemic miliary TV. When TB spreads to other tissues, it causes complications related to organs affected. Kidneys are commonly affected, resulting in a sterile peuria, or high levels of white blood cells in the urine. It might also spread in the meninges of the brain, causing meningitis, the lumbar vertebrae causing Pat dis disease, the adrenal glands causing Addison's disease, the livers causing hepatitis, and the cervical lymph nodes causing the lymphadenitis in the neck, also known as the scofulia. Testing for the TB often starts with the purified protein derivatives, or the PPD, intradermal skin test, sometimes known as the tuberculin skin test, or the Mantu test, or simply the TB test. With this test, tuberculin injected between the layers of the dermis. Tuberculin is a component of the bacteria, and if a person has previously been exposed to TB, the immune system reacts to the tuberculin, and produces a small like localized reactions within 48 to 72 hours. If the air reactions created a large enough area of indurations, rather than just redness, it's considered to be a positive test. Positive tuberculin test simply means that the patient has been exposed at some point to TB. It doesn't differentiate between the active and the latent disease. As an alternative to a tuberculin skin test, there are also interferon gamma release assay or the IGRA, which look for the evidence in the bloods of previous exposure to TB proteins. Since this one is a blood test, you don't need to show up again to have the test read like you do in the PPD. Also, the IGRA is more specific to TB. Rather than other types of microbacterial infections, and is unlikely to be positive as a result of having BCG vaccine in the past. A vaccine that protects against TB. And this is a pretty usual feature of the IGRAs, since the BCG's vaccines given to a lot of children around the world to prevent disseminated TB. After doing a screening test with a PPD or IGRA, anyone with a positive result typically gets the chest x-ray to look for signs of active TB. In patients with symptoms like fever, night sweats, weight loss, and coughing up blood or hemoptysis, it is important to collect samples from either the sputum or from the bronchoalveolar lavage, which is where the bronchoscope is inserted through the mouth or to the nose into the lungs. Fluid is squirted and then that fluid is collected. The samples can get sent to the lab for staining culture and PCR to look for the evidence of the microbacterium tuberculosis. Treatment for latent TB infections typically involves using a single drug for a prolonged period of time. Most common approaches are the isoniazid for 9 months. Treatment of active TB is typically of combinations of an antibiotic which results in patients being non-infectious to others, usually within a few weeks. Until that point though, patients can spread TB to others and it's typically adults with reactive TB that are the most infectious. As a result, patients are typically kept in a negative pressure rooms and visitors are asked to wear protective N95 masks that can filter out oral aerosols, but can filter out at least 95% of aerosols, in this case, TB. Even after the patients are no longer contagious, they are typically kept on the medications for mainly months to be sure that the bacteria are destroyed. Usually with direct observations therapy or DOT, 
or somebody watches or confirms that you're taking the medications. Additionally, there's an enormous worry about the new drug resistant strains of TB. Additionally, there's an enormous worry about the new drug resistant strains of TB, causing an infection in the various parts of the world. You measure about the MDR TB or the multi drug resistant TB, or even the XDR TB, which is the extremely drug resistant TB, which are incredibly hard to treat because they don't die in the presence of our usual antibiotics. The bottom line is to give an infective treatment. It's super important to make sure that being used will work against a specific stream of TB. The multiple medications are used together to prevent drug resistance from developing and that the medications are used for the entire course of therapy so that all the microbacterium tuberculosis is killed off.